Uh, it was, Maybe. yes. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I'm trying to remember back yeah. to that swing, but. When, when, when you, you see your with... swing, Ryan, what do you, what do you what do you think when you see your your swings? I know when we all look at our own golf swings, we're like. Ooh. Well, maybe a little well, bit. I mean, it's, at least an I of, it's an endless search for something else always, right? Um, yeah. Some of the things that, that – so I, I work with Rick Silva now, uh, Movement 3 Golf. You know, he's out of Chicago. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, he's a, he's a biomechanist, you know, robotics guy. So he's all about efficiency, you know, over, over anything else. And getting me to crank through my joint segments a lot better, you know, and cycle through my joints a lot better and try to get like less muscly with the golf swing and just, you know, more efficient through my joint segments. So um, we've really been working on trying to get passive with my lower body as crazy as that sounds. Um, so I can cycle better through my pelvis and, and exchange more energy up through my thorax, you know, down through my hands. Um, I tend to... Uh like follow through or impact follow through downswings where are you trying to be more passive with your um, transition really so my first okay yeah it, with my old big swing you know my first um really is as crazy as that's how we squat um so like it's like for my pelvis and, and exchange uh -huh. up for my thorax. and then you know, I would just kind of, I would just kind of squat and then fight, spin and fire off my, my lead leg, which is a little more of a baseball pattern. I was a baseball athlete all the way through high school. So kind of that, that baseball pattern where you get a little hang back, you know, weights on the right side, fire off the, the left leg, lead leg, um, stay behind it and throw the hands. It's kind of still there. Um, so what we're doing is, is get a little bit more passive in transition and shift obviously get more of my weight left um, where I can cycle through my pelvis and build a better structured impact um, yeah. off my left leg. And then That's obviously throw off the pelvis. Does that makes sense. Um, you know, I, I don't use my legs as efficiently as I should. And to be quite honest at 250 pounds, I think I can move more weight into the golf ball. Um, I'd like to think there's another five to 7% there. Nice. Well, what, what kind of ball speeds are you maxing out at now? Uh, it, it depends on, you know, what kind of equipment I'm in, obviously, uh, we'll say at full speed last year on a quad on, uh, coach Silva, Rick Silva's quad, I put up 223, 224. That's great. Cordy, Cordy, what are you, you're right about there, aren't you? I'm right there, you know, <laughs> at like half um, of that on a good day. It's gotta be at least, you know, hundred degrees and humid outside. So we can really get moving. That <laughs> uh, happens um, in Minnesota. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you know, on the rare day that happens here, I'm up there, but typically, you know, I'm only, you know, just 50 mile an hour slower than that. So yeah. other than that, you know, just right there. That's good. Well, Rick's yeah. a friend of mine. I didn't realize he was helping you. So I think that's great. Very cool. Gliders go um, a long way too, dude. Gliders can fly a long way too, man. So yeah, well, you get the muscle mass is, is certainly helpful to help you rip yeah. those things out there. Well, that's, that would be pretty interesting if you're getting into close to that 220 range on a pretty good hit and you think you got another 5% more. God yeah, bless honestly, you, man. Honestly, I, I don't think, um, I don't think consistent mid twenties is, is a stretch for me. That's at awesome. All. Oh, I'm excited yeah. to see you do it for sure. So hey, I, tell everybody on the show, we just jumped right into you hitting a ball really far and explaining how fast you swing. Why, why, why do you think we're here talking about you? Talking about me? The yeah. beast of the Northeast? That's right. The beast of the Northeast. Uh, I don't know, because there's, you know, I break all the boxes. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I was uh, just recently honored to be flexing in Golf Digest. So How was, how'd that work? How many, what'd they have to do to I get you a meathead. I'm more of a meathead now, and I appreciate Golf Digest for making me be the biggest meathead they've ever put on a They're page. Guys, aren't they? Wonderful magazine. Um, yeah, you know, it, that was really cool. That was at Worlds. Um, you know, obviously I had a good season last year, so I had a win. Um, went to number one in the world for a little while. Um, yeah, short little while, but hey, I can say, I, you know, I was number one in the world. Um, Somebody else with some long flowing locks might have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, he's, that a roll, but... too. he's a buzz. <laughs> he's so good. We're all chasing him down. Um, I might have to hit him with my car to beat him but we'll, we'll figure it out um 
no, no, I had a, you know, I had a good year. I had a win. I had a, you know, I had a runner up in Atlanta, or excuse me, Atlantic city. Um, you know, it, you know, clips number one in the world. So I was fortunate enough yeah. to be invited into that spread. So, yeah, no, that's awesome, yeah. man. And really you're here because I just reached out to you and asked if you'd be interested in doing some uh, exclusive content for us, sure. which you did. And we're going to share how to get to that one. Um, uh, the website will be attached all over to this thing and we'll, we'll get that out to our students here. Cause I think it's cool to what, what you did. So you did basically an at home workout, um, which was a ton of fun. And I appreciate your approach. So this is where we start. Uh, my ball speeds aren't in the two twenties, but uh, I can hit it kind of far. And we all have a similar approach, which is don't treat people like a China doll that all of them are going to break. Uh, strength training yeah. is good for people. If everybody in the world strength trained, we'd have a really cool place to live to begin with. Yeah, um, so I know you, you share a similar methodology in there. I do have a, a, a question I thought about last night. If Cordy Walker, wanted to look like you tomorrow, uh, what sort of regimen should he be doing tonight? Steroids. <laughs> yeah. That's what I had as IGF one, 200 milligrams uh, of injectable tea, yeah, a couple I mean, rounds of SARMs. No, here's, the, here's the thing. Uh, hey, for, uh, first of all, Nick, just a great question. <laughs> I'm really happy that you Spent your time last night coming up with that. You know Great. what I viewed more in is? You should. At least he's thinking about you at night, man. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, that's that's nutrition, right? So, I mean, you know, a, a guy looking to put on a little mass, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a brick by brick approach. I mean, we're not going to build the building all at once, right? So, yeah, solid foundation, good nutrition, good training regimen, you know, mass is built in, obviously – you know, the right formula of that for that individual, you know, lifting heavy, you know. Oh, I love it. You know, if, if I had to nail this down for golfers and how to just uh, like the most basic formula of how to uh, get ready for golf, it would be uh, jerf, just eat real food, lift some heavy things two or three times a week, and then stop worrying about all the little fringe pieces that you can get lost at. That's the minutia, yeah. not the biggest part. You feel similar? Yeah. There's so much noise out there right now. I mean, there's so much noise. And honestly, I feel, you know, I feel for the consumer, you know, on the player looking, you know, trying to make sense of it all. Um, because, you know, it, this subject of kind of golf fitness is, I mean, it's, it's coming in from all different directions and everybody kind of has their own, you know, their own strategy, their own methodology, you know, and, and sometimes too much, you know, is, is way too much. Yeah. You know. And anything works with adherence, but the hard part is just uh, uh, people make it too complicated. So that's where Very I appreciate so. your approach. Hey, let's so. start yeah. there though with, with, with food. What, do, yeah. what's a typical day for you look like? Uh, I mean, what are you eating every day? Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty balanced. You know, I'm more of my body responds really a lot better on a higher protein, higher fat diet, you know, lower carb diet. I've just found that, you know, that's, that's better for me. Um, so, I mean, clean proteins, the usual stuff that us big guys eat, you know, chicken, salmon, you know, white fish, uh, okay. turkey, you know, saturated fats or, you know, avocado, you know, um, nut oils, oils. Um, and then, you know, a carb source is rice, jasmine rice, you know, all those, Man, all those things. sweet potato. Boring, Ryan. Oh, yeah. Well, trust me. I'm a <laughs> 20 guy. Okay. So I'll just, I'm, I'm, I'll do my 80%, but I really enjoy my 20%. That's um, good. What's it? What's a, what's like the, uh, your, your current workouts. What are those looking like right now? And then Cordy and I are going to do one. Well, in my living room, they're a lot different than what I'm used to, you know, okay. that's for sure. Um, I mean, I'm used to, a, you know, my, my facility, my former facility, which is fully equipped gym with every toy bell and whistle you could possibly imagine. Um, which actually speaks to, um, you know, what we're going to talk about today, which is, you know, kind of going back to fundamental fitness, but, you know, fundamental fitness for golf that anybody can do. So you don't need, you know, you don't need the, you know, the fully equipped big box gym. You don't need the fully equipped, you know, performance gym, you know, to get your body ready to go out there and hit the links. You know, maybe it's a kettlebell, a dumbbell, some free space, you know, and, and your body weight, you know, we can get, get a lot done there. No, it's awesome. Okay. Well, how about on that one? Um, uh, you did a 
is it five videos you did for us? Is that how many there were? Five or six? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, they didn't even like, we didn't even scratch the tip of that. Oh, this is a I know. The, the, the couple I watched, you were just getting into a few little things, but I wanted to do something with Cordy. Cordy, you want to try one of these exercises? Have you been stretching or did you <laughs> take any I would, I would of those steroids yet? Try one of these oh, exercises. great. Well, then let's do let's start that journey of packing on some lean mass there. Yes. <laughs> Because if the wind blows too hard, it looks like you're going to blow away. So let's work on this. <laughs> wow. Cordy, see, you always say it's just me. It's not just me. Uh, Good target. I'm going to yeah, try not to knock over my track lady here. All right. All right what are we going to do, Ryan? Probably got to see my lower body too. So let me. If I step back, you guys hear me okay? Got yep. it. All right. Perfect. So, so we'll talk lunge patterns, but, you know, there's – there's really like five fundamental big movement patterns to focus on. Um, and if, if these big five were like, you did these every day, you'd be doing more than enough. So you have squat patterns, deadlift patterns, lunge patterns, hinge patterns, and press patterns, right? Simple stuff, big five. So what we're going to do today is talk about a lunge pattern. And, you know, everybody out there knows, everybody watching knows what a lunge is. And that's just, you know, that's just a single kind of step forward lunge, right, or reverse lunge, right? So we're loading asymmetrically, right, in the set, in, yeah, there you go. We're just loading asymmetrically in a lunge pattern in the sagittal planer in front of us, right? Yep. And this is, where we, this is where we all live. This is our lifestyle, okay? Especially the desk jockeys, right, which mostly everybody is, okay? We go to the office, we drive, we travel, Okay, we're working in front, we're working in back, we're sitting at the desk typing, we're standing up, we're sitting down, that's about it, right? Unfortunately, well, fortunately, unfortunately, golf, okay, is lived this way. So in the frontal plane, right, side to side weight shift, things we always talk about, and it's lived in the 3D plane or the transverse plane, okay? Planes we do not live in anymore. Right. I mean, we even have a swivel chair that does the work for us now. Right. So golf, golf is side to side and all around. It's not so much in front, which is something we need to condition the body for uh, once again, so that, you know, the golf swing can be a little bit freer when we get out on the tee box, you know, and our body's basically ready to handle those, those kind of loads. Yeah. So if we took a simple lunge pattern, and we wanted to, you know, customize it for golf, right? Let's start training those lunge patterns in the planar specific environment. So front lunge, perfect. Okay, lateral lunge, right? Now we're, now we're a little bit more golfish. So lateral lunge, sit your hips back, make sure you load the glutes, upper hamstring, right? Okay, stretch off the, stretch off the trail hip, right? Obviously you'll get a great stretch in through the groin and through the adductors, right? Areas in the hips that need to be open and free so the pelvis can move freely, load and explode and so forth. So if we did a lateral lunge, which is weight shifted golf, what would be the next variation? It would be a rotational reverse lunge, right? And now we're starting to cycle through the pelvis, good. And I already can see, Nick, you and I got to stretch, dude, for like 90 days before we do this, bro. So, <laughs> Old, man. I'm old. And it's, it's pretty simple. So, you know, if you add those together and you wanted to kind of work in like a set, you can actually do all three and just kind of work okay, all the way around the clock. So if we went 12 yeah. o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, right? And we did that five or six times each leg, right? We start working the planes of the golf swing and you start conditioning your pelvis to cycle in 3D. Simple stuff. So I apply, I apply kind of that same, I kind of apply that, that same methodology to everything I do, whether it be lunges, so a deadlift, which you guys will see, uh, in the little segments I do, you know, a deadlift can turn into a lateral deadlift can turn into a deadlift and rotation. So now you cycle the hip through internal, external rotation, um, press patterns, same thing. 
So we all know what a bench press is or a single arm press. So what happens when we take that and we press across our body? Sorry, you guys can't see me. You're fine. You're fine. So we press across our body. Okay. So there's your frontal plane press with some rotation, working T spine on the pelvis, golfish. And then what we can do is add that rotational reverse lunge, boom, and start pressing, working counter rotation and disassociation. Simple stuff. Yeah. You know, simple stuff, and you can home. effectively do it at home and wear oh, yourself God. out. So I love it. Yeah. Um, I, I do feel like a, a lot of people are stuck doing cardio versus strength training for golf. Um, mm -hmm. If you had to pick one, which one are you going to pick, Ryan? Well, I mean, all right. So I was strength training. I mean, to, to answer the question and not to go on this, another 30 minute tangent, but strength training, um, you know, golf is a, golf is a very forceful thing for the body to do. Like this is, an, I, you know, in my opinion, it's contact sport, which it is right. I mean, the sheer force, the compressive force on the joints, especially the spine, I mean, is, is almost that of a, you know, they, they talk about a hundred meter dash, almost six times an Olympic hundred meter dash, right? And we're asking people to do that right out of the car. You know, no warm up, go swing the golf club. You know, you wonder why I'm in business trying to fix all those people that get hurt, you know? Um, you know, golf is done that fast. The body's gotta be able to produce force that fast it's got to be strong enough to be able to do that over four hours you know in some cases yep. five. so um yeah strength training getting strong right making sure your big muscles are are strong enough to handle those forces okay but also you know being pliable at the right areas too because the joint segments got to be able to move freely okay mm -hmm. the intrinsic stabilizer's got to be able to grab a hold of that joint segment you know during that that, that production of force. Um, you need some good strength within the mobility that you've got for sure. Yeah, a, lot of, yeah. a lot of workout programs really kind of skip that. And I, I always look at uh, for, for muscle anyway, it's a lot like having money. If you've got it, you can use it for a lot of different things and yeah. golf in particular to be safe, yeah. uh, safely done, the stronger you are, if, assuming yeah. that you can actually lift weights in a safe manner, which uh, yeah. can be done. And even just the workout program you did, that's why I wanted you to do that one of, uh, what can you do at home with nothing? Uh, I promise you that will be an exhaustive strength training workout. Yeah, do that for a minute. So. Do it for a minute. You're exactly. Yeah. What to, uh, you know, what I talk about so, uh, strength training is how to do it safely because I do think that's the most important thing for people to, to do first is not necessarily do what will give you the best results, but start straight up. Uh, uh, safely. Have you ever, uh, what are your thoughts on like the uh, super slow programs, body by science, um, anything using the uh, Nautilus machines that have the uh, adjustable cams that allow you to move at a pretty slow weight, but also the weights adjusting as you're moving? Sure. Um, no, I, I like that. You know, I like those. I mean, they promote, um, you know, added firing rate, more fiber recruitment, you know, throughout the exercise. Um, you know, I'm kind of a, I'm a free motion guy. I like space. Okay. Cause my body, my body is going to interpret moving in space a lot different than your body would. Um, you know, machines put you, you're a prisoner to how that machine is built, you know, mechanically to move. And, you know, it, you might process that differently, that motion differently intrinsically than I would. Right. I kind of always take the anal an analogy from a machine standpoint. Like if I bought, a sliding glass door from Lowe's and I put it in the track from another company from Home Depot and I fit that thing in there and I just jammed it from side to side, you know, for an hour straight, it's going to break. It's that simple, you know? So, um, you know, if, if I was going to go kind of variable resistance, super slow, I'd probably work bands more so than I would a machine. Okay, Just that leads me to a different question, I guess. Same sort of thing. So you, uh, you value uh, more free weight bands than the machines. That's I get that part totally. How about uh, if someone had to buy like a couple of things to work out at home? Uh, you mentioned bands. Would that be one of the two that you might tell everybody to get? I would say um, bands, a kettlebell, and a medicine ball. Okay. I like it. Cordy, oh, Cordy, is that what you use every day? Absolutely. So I start every okay. day. Yep. When, sure when me and my six month old get up at, at 6 a.m., we we go straight there. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. I can right. tell. Well, that's a lie. But anyway, 
Hey, I brought a driver. I'm always getting mocked that I need to join the senior division of long drive. So here's one that I've got. It's a, a epic flash. So I want to talk about what was a little bit different than you're with Callaway, Ryan. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, I have okay. Callaway. Do you have this driver? Did you have this last year? Okay. Um, so this one actually, I thought was interesting. That's the new head for us um, yeah. that, that landed this year. Yeah. Uh, last so, year we hit the full flash and the XRs. Um, it's interesting, yeah. you know, I mean, we're, we're a group that, that puts the technology to the test and it takes That's where I'm going with this thing, man, because there is no composite on this whatsoever. And there wasn't on last year's driver either. So, uh, I'm wondering, I'm curious, I, I'll, I'll probably try to, to ask somebody from Callaway on this one. If it's the, uh, the weight ratio was a little bit tough to get, uh, this is a slightly lighter head than the, than, uh, the standard has. But I wondered if the compression or the amount or how hard you guys were hitting this, if that's just what made made the composite crown and the composite anywhere in the sole just not usable because they'd fall apart. So I'm interested in yes. figuring that out. But this is all metal up here. Yeah. So it's uh, right. interesting. You go right through those those welds yeah. pretty quickly. Is that what it is? The composite just pops right off? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. this one on the CT uh, test right. is actually a little low, which I'm finding interesting as well. But I, I would I'd hypothesize that they start low, they get faster the more you hit them. And if yeah. you started with a CT that was too high, you'd ultimately be past that legal limit, breaking these things too quick. Yeah. We, um, you know, it's interesting. Like, you know, I let I let the sciencey stuff stay with the sciencey guys. You know, yeah, they yeah. tell me they tell me where the heads are at when they test them. Um, you know, we've gotten We've gotten to a point, uh, especially with the XR heads, which are two versions ago, which are like little gold nuggets right now. If you find an XR head, you hang on to it. It's like the Willy Wonka golden ticket. Mm. All right. Um, I got one here. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> eBay. Later today, you'll be able to find them. mine. Thank God. Uh, our season's canceled, so I get to take all six to Worlds this year. Um, <laughs> but like we got, we got a point where we knew that head so good that we knew when it was just about to fail and it was just, I mean, they were just nuclear, just so hot. Like the faces were so hot, you know, I mean, you would probably get like 10 or 15 balls, you know, at the highest ball speed you would ever see off that. And then they would just flatten and crack, you know, and then be, be done. But so we would literally hit these heads up to that point and then put them away, hit the next head up to that point, put it away. And then it was, Hang on to that. man, it was, uh, it was like a head of set. I remember Worlds in 17. Crazy, yeah, man. One head. You guys are going that's that. done. Head. That's yeah. done. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's unique that you can figure out when you think you're just about maxing out the ball speed on that and then hang on to that. Yeah. Keep a little yeah. Don't, even touch it. don't just put it away. Like, don't even look at it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's too tempting that's to hit it again. Hey, I heard you did something cool on the Titan games. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I can. I can talk about that now, finally. Um, I was approached in August, August, September of last year, um, by NBC and the Titan games, uh, the rocks show, which is like, you know, the gladiators of 2020, I guess. I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's like, it's American gladiators just with a, with a crazy, you know, mono -y mono twist, um, which is like totally awesome and cool. So Do you know when that goes live or when that show starts airing? Yeah, we're going to air uh, the 25th of May. Okay. It's a two hour premiere. Um, yeah, there were Titans from all over the country that were invited in. I actually had to go to a combine in LA. Um, and, you know, they put us through our paces and then they just kind of chose us from there. Um, That's so nice. it, they had to test to make sure you're strong enough. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was, yeah, I mean, test to see how strong we are, see, you know, how athletic we are, if we're going to be able to actually put on a good show, you know, that's, there's, uh, you know, what kind of personality are you? Are you going to be fun to watch? Are you going to be entertained a little bit? You know, are you going to be a floor mat? You know, stuff like that. So yeah, sure. reality television, I don't, I don't know. It, it should be fun. Oh, yeah. sounds very cool. Learned a lot of things about myself. Yeah. I can't put any spoilers out there, but I learned some of the things I should not be doing ever again in my life. So, oh, well, we'll that's good. I'll out. watch it and silently judge and see if I can figure out exactly what they're doing. <laughs> oh, you'll know exactly. As soon as you see it, you'll know exactly what I'm not going to be doing it. <laughs> but, hey, uh, back to the um, um, back to the advice that you could give, like 
the average golfer is really watching this. That's what yeah. mo- uh, I'd say most of our students really are average golfers because they're looking to get better, not playing real well. So they come on in. We get a ton of good players too, for sure. sure. But what's like one, uh, uh, I mentioned uh, jerf, just eat real food as dietary advice for, for the average guy. Do you have any sort of um, uh, advice about uh, one thing that somebody should avoid eating right now? That's a big question. It is. That's why I'm asking you. One thing people should avoid eating. Sugar. Whatever Cordy's eating. Yeah, sugar. 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 Is that just sugar and water, Cordy? Is Taco Bell good? I don't know. <laughs> Actually, Taco Bell. I think Taco Bell was rated one of the healthiest fast food chains out there. I can see that. I can see that. All right. So, so stick away from sugar. How about sure. uh, supplementation? I'm guessing you take a few things, but uh, instead of asking you what you take, What's uh, what's like the every man's guide to having one supplement that you think uh, most people should have? Um, I, I, I do. I do. They work in conjunction. They work together. So I would do two protein, amino acid. OK, gotcha. Yeah. Anything in particular that you take that uh, is in the similar vein, a brand or a, a product that you take, you think everybody? Should uh, have? I take performance inspired products. OK, um, you know, they're, they're cool. safe. Yeah, they're, you know, sports certified. So. Yeah. What does that do, or why would you recommend taking that? Protein? Yeah, protein, man. Building blocks of muscle, man, you know. Um, you know, and the amino acids obviously help the protein. You know, they help the recovery, and they help the protein work better, you know, within, within the physiology of the, of the muscle. Um, you know, I mean, the younger guys, if they want to get into it, I mean, creatine, obviously, you know, I still supplement with creatine. I've supplemented with creatine my whole life, ever since I was a competitive athlete. Um, that's just energy system stuff. You know, the creatine phosphate system deals with fast and explosive movement. Um, having more creatine readily available helps that system recover faster and allows you to train, you know, at higher intensities. That's where that without gets. getting without getting like super deep into your macros that you have, you, you know, you mentioned protein and fat, a little bit of carbs is really where you live. How many grams of protein a day are you trying to get? Or do you think you get? To be, I don't count to be quite honest. Yeah. That's I just, why I, I just make sure. Speculate. Yeah, I just make sure my my meals are more protein heavy than they are carb heavy. That's all. Um, mm-hmm. Man, you know I'm probably a gram to a gram and a half per kilo body weight right now. Okay, so a, a couple kilos. hundred maybe. So I got a lot of kilos on me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right now I that do. archaic that archaic metric system always gets me. Yeah, yeah, well, it's funny. So by I, two point two. Um, it, this is a tangent, but I have a girlfriend who's Canadian, and ah. that is just like, how hot is it today? Oh, it's eight. What do you mean? Eight. Not eight. She's you know? that's the wrong answer. Yeah, she I know. That's what I'm saying. It just drives me crazy. Like meters, kilometers, whatever, Celsius, whatever. Yeah. It's just anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. To to be quite honest with you, you know, it, I'm getting up there in age a little bit, thirty seven. A lot of people say it's not old, but I feel old at 37. You know, the, the beard's great. Um, I'd like to say I'm probably going to lose a little bit of weight. So the beast would be a little lighter. I know I'm talking about myself in third person, but I'm I'm the fastest at around 240. So I could I could probably lose 13 to 15, 18 pounds and just feel a little bit better in my, my body. Is so, that a little quarantine weight you put on or what, what exactly uh... – or have you been just bulking you know, up? Honestly, more? I think it's just the winter and having young kids that eat junk food. Yep. So, you know, you'll pick a dino nugget here, a dino nugget there. And you just, okay, I'll have half of your ice cream sandwich. <laughs> you, know? well, you can't throw that out. Totally you know? get it. You know how uh, you said don't eat sugar, Ryan? Don't eat sugar. Liquor stores are still open. You know? How about that for a question? You've got uh, which way is Cordy for me? He's just like one of these directions. Hypothetically, uh, let's say you're stuck at home quarant- quarantining a little bit and you may or may not be drinking a touch more than usual. You got any advice for someone like that? Uh, <laughs> about alcohol choice? No, this- maybe, well, sure, you could do that, but maybe just how to feel better. Uh, let's say if you are having a little too much alcohol. Uh, hydrate. Yeah, I mean, hydrate. Wake up in the morning and just, just have a massive jug of water. You know, throw some, you go. throw some Himalayan sea salt in there, get some electrolytes going, you know, maybe a little, you know, lemon lime, um, yep. cucumber water is really good. 
you know, yeah. So you, I, mentioned, you mentioned put some salt in water. That might, to the average person who doesn't know about fitness, uh, that might have just thrown them for a loop. Can you elaborate just a little bit on that? Uh, it's, well, it's sodium. I mean, it's just, it's an electrolyte. It, it helps with, you know, uh, muscle contraction. And, you know, basically it's just a primary, you know, electrolyte for the body, you know, to utilize yep. energy. It's very important. The right kind. Oh. So sodium chloride, table salt, no go. Sea salt, Himalayan sea salt, pink sea salt. It's great. Yeah, just go that route. Sprinkle a little bit in that, your water. It'll help you water. hydrate faster. You'll hardly taste it. You'll hardly taste it. Or it tastes uh, good anyway. You don't, you don't put much in it. Just a little bit. Yeah. Or are you writing that down? Looks like you're, I see you grabbing a pen. I'm from it. Supplement, yeah. some salt. I'm, I got a lot of things to order from this. Medicine ball, kettle, kettle ball. I got a long list. Wait, Amazon, here we go. Put in the notes. Um, so we got to, so Ryan, we've got your, um, your five or six part video series, uh, on our blog. We'll put the link in the description of this video, uh, down below. Super excited that you did that for us. I hope we can do some more stuff for you, but really I want people to like come check you out. And if sure. they're interested in your services, like sign up and do some sort of virtual program. I know you can teach people how to be strong and hit the ball farther. I mean, the proof's in, in how you look and how you perform already. Uh, you got a place where people can find you or, um, yeah, I mean, right now, should be um, looking? yeah, right now I'd probably, I mean, Instagram, I live on Instagram. So, you know, golf freak fitness is where I live. You know, you throw me a DM in my, you know, my message box, Facebook, find me on Facebook. You know, you can reach me there. Um, I, I do, I do own a training aid, a swing trainer called the Twitch trainer that I invented, um, at twitchtrainer.com. So if you're looking to stay golf, you know, and, and keep your sequence conditioned and coordinated while in quarantine, ooh, that actually sounded really good. Um, <laughs> you know, twistturner.com is where you're at. Yeah, you know, watching you hit uh, this shot. It, yeah, I think that uh, that would be awesome. People should be following you and taking a look at some of these bombs that you're hitting here. These are this one was a little chilly. Was it okay? Yeah, a little if bit. you do hit a, if you do hit a bad one, um, where do they go? For me, uh, my miss actually now is left. Okay. So I'll just like kind of pull it and then pull and throw some hooks been on it. And yeah, it, it misses yeah. left. It's miss. hard for you not to with all the shoulder tilt to the right. Your right forearm is so much above the shaft yeah. at this point in time. It's hard not to twist yeah, that. We're working on those That's how you hit it hard, man. You got to do that. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm always uh, interested in these, in your long drive swings because to hit as far as you can, you've got to do some some different things like at the top of your swing if you want to max out how hard you could probably hit this a way to do it is just what you did there you raise your arms up a ton yep. but then on the way down when your left arm is parallel to the ground it is really far out away from you you're ready to actually yeah. have a swing direction that's pretty far to the left so you have to learn how to uh, compensate that this is like uh, this picture right here where the shaft goes through your neck that's how most of our students come come into the door and they slice Yep. What you do a really nice job of is between this picture and the next one I'll pause it at is lower that swing direction so that now you're actually hitting pretty straight into the ball or yeah. slightly to the right. You know, some biceps I, on it for sure. Yeah, that's right. You're ripping that thing pretty hard. What we definitely, and, and that's what, you know, and that's what Rick and I are trying not to do as much anymore, you know, is me having to compensate with my brute force and strength, you know, so getting, getting the shaft to lay down, you know, at transition as I start moving into the ball, you know, so I can, so I can shallow it out, get the, get the club plane off my right shoulder and then just, and then just rotate yeah. through the ball rather than, you know, kind of get vertical and lift through it. So yeah. stuff like I that. I get it. That'll be hard because of how high your arms are. It's really mm -hmm. hard to lower the shaft enough. So mm -hmm. it's a daunting task. And if you can do anything just to keep it from getting higher, uh, I know you and Rick are working on really good stuff. So I think that's awesome. Yeah. Cordy, what, what else? I asked Ryan a bunch of stuff. You you sat there. Were you just I, writing down? I've just been making Liberal lists. Notes? I got a lot to do, okay. Nick. There's a lot of things to do from this <laughs> lot. Okay. You got homework. I don't have time to ask questions because I got to go watch the videos. I got to go get all the stuff off of Amazon. And I'm going to be transformed by next Tuesday when you see me here on the live. Don't now. forget to don't forget to order that Floby we've been talking about, too. I know you got to that hair a little yeah. bit. Yeah, we do need to work on that too. You always just do the quarantine cut. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that let's would do be that on the next show, Cordy. You should do that. Shave your head on the next show. Quarantine cut, baby. Yes. Yeah. So many people would love to watch that, Cordy. <laughs> At least I would. 
we need a lot of viewers to do that. I don't know. I would. <laughs> we're gonna need uh, some something. Not there yet. Okay. That'd well, be a anyway. big it, Ryan, are we missing anything else? Anything else? Uh, uh, any, I think we got sponsors accidentally. We got uh, your workout series, which I think will be cool, and people can check that out for free on our channels for sure. I want to do some more stuff with you. If they're interested in finding you, go to your Instagram page. I don't know. We got a lot done. We even talked about golf clubs today. Yeah, I think I think we hit. I think we fired off on all pistons for sure. Thanks. So. Okay, well then next week, Cordy, what, what should we do next week? You got any any thoughts? Um, you know, I think we'll be back with some more good jokes. Um, maybe we'll talk a little golf. Uh, you never know what's going to happen here in the live show. It's just always a surprise every day. <laughs> Even your shock too. Well, congrats for the Golf Digest article too. That's a, it's really cool. Yes. All this publicity is really good. We're wishing you the best. Uh, Love your methodology, and then I'm ready to watch the Titan Games Titan May Game 25th. Day, May 25th. Cool. Yep. All right. Absolutely. Okay. Well, well, there you go, Cordy. This is your turn. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate you hanging out. Folks should check that out, and um, the Twitch trainer as well. Yep. Um, I'm definitely going to go check that out. I, I think I saw it at the show, but I didn't get to swing one yet, so it looks mm-hmm. sweet. It is um, it's good. But yeah, no, this is good. We'll see you all next week, uh, Tuesday. We're here at two Eastern. Nick and I. Um, and we'll be back with some more riveting conversation next week. <laughs>